Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. After having uh, read you one of my short, short stories about suicide, I thought I would balance things out with uh, reading someone else's essay, Jews and Their Jokes by Joseph Epstein. It's a long essay, so I've only excerpted part. After reading Jeremy Darber's book, Jewish Comedy, A Serious History, an excellent new survey of Jewish humor from the Old Testament through Adam Sandler, some might say that God chose the Jews to convey jokes, write sitcoms and comic movies, and publish novels peopled chiefly by clownish anti-heroes. Citing a Pew Research Center study titled A Portrait of Jewish Americans, Dora reports that 42% of respondents felt that having a good sense of humor was part of being Jewish in America today, 14% more than being part of a Jewish community, and 23% more than observing Jewish law. In other words, at the heart of being Jewish in the minds of a preponderant number of American Jews is comedy. How did this minority people produce so much humor, so many jokey jakeys? Every decent book on comedy should at minimum have several good jokes. Anti-Semitic jokes have never been in short supply. What's the ultimate Jewish dilemma? Ham on sale. Jokes about anti-Semites, though, tend to be richer, like the one about the drunk at the bar, who three times offers to buy drinks for the house, each time excluding from his generosity my Israelite Pam, my Israelite pal at the end of the bar. When the Jew asks the drunk what he has against him, the drunk answers, you sank the Titanic. The Jew replies, I didn't sink the Titanic, an iceberg sank the Titanic. After belching daintily, the drunk responds, Iceberg, Greenberg, Goldberg, you all know damn good. I used to fancy a definition of the Jews as just like everyone else, except more so. But more needs to be said if one is to understand Jewish humor, not the jokes, but the impetus driving the humor. I should say this derives from the split social personality of Jews, their simultaneous feeling of resentment at not being entirely in the mainstream of ordinary life, joined to their disdain for the vapidity of that life, thus linking a sense of inferiority to one of superiority. Dauber sets out the various theories of humor. There is, for example, the lachrymose theory of Jewish humor. The joke here is that the theme of every Jewish holiday is, we suffered, we survived, let's eat. Dauber brings up earlier movies that were <clears throat> de-Semitized or made less Jewish by Hollywood studio moguls, the Jewish Sam Goldwyn, Louis B. Mayer, and others, lest they not find ready recognition and acceptance with non-Jewish audiences. No movie, though, could be more Jewish than Mel Brooks' producers. That it can be made at all, let alone come to be considered a classic, is a sign of how deeply Jewish American humor has permeated U.S. culture. There's a nice selection of Jewish curses. May your bones be broken as often as the Ten Commandments. The most politically incorrect of such jokes are Jewish women jokes, which play on the stereotypes of the nagging, overcaring, overbearing, disapproving Jewish mother, the Jewish American princess. What does a Jap make for dinner? Reservations. Jews in cosmetic surgery? Dorothy Parker said that Fanny Bryce's rhinoplasty was a case of cutting off her nose to spite her race. The domineering wife? When a boy returns home from school to announce he is to play the Jewish husband in a school play, his mother sends him back to tell the teacher he wants a speaking part. And the extravagant wife. A thief stole my per wife's purse with all her credit cards. I'm not going after him. He spends less than she does. Perhaps the summa of Jewish women jokes has Goldberg walking along the beach who picks up a bottle out of which emerges a genie, offering him one wish. Goldberg wishes for world peace. The genie tells him he gets that wish a lot and hasn't much, had much success in fulfilling it. Perhaps he'd like to try another wish. Very well, Goldberg says. Then he would like more respect from his wife for her to provide the occasional home-cooked meal, perhaps allow him sex every other fiscal quarter. The genie pauses and said, Tell me, Goldberg, what precisely do you mean by world peace? Perhaps the edgiest of contemporary Jewish comedians is Sarah Silverman who in one of her bits quoted by Dauber claimed it was neither the Romans nor the Jews who killed Christ, but the blacks. In another bit, Silverman plays a ditzy woman in her early 30s, childless, her biological clock running, who recounts how inconvenient at various earlier stages in her life it would have been to have a child, and concludes, the best time to have a baby is when you're a black teenager. How Silverman has been able to tell such politically incorrect jokes and not be stoned to death is an interesting question. A category that Dauber might have added to his other seven is that of jokes about Jewish assimilation and Jews sliding away from Judaism and their Jewishness generally. 
Perhaps the subtlest of these jokes is the one about the three rabbis who over lunch discovered that all of them had a problem with mice in their synagogues. The first rabbi recounts that he called it an exterminator, but without great success. The second rabbi tells that he set tens of mouse, mouse traps around a synagogue, but when one of the traps went off, it greatly disturbed the service, and he had to remove them all. The third rabbi, however, announced that he found a solution by buying a 25-pound wheel of Stilton cheese that he set on the altar, whereupon 68 mice suddenly appeared. When asked how, he got, how that got rid of the problem, the rabbi replies, I bar mitzvahed all 68. They never returned. I need to explain that to non-Jews. Many, if not most Jews, after getting bar mitzvahed, have little or nothing to do with synagogues ever again. At the close of his book, Dauber mentions the possibility that the end of the political uh, end of the Jewish comedy era may be near. Political correctness figures eventually to take its toll on Jewish comedy, as well as all comedy. My own view is that, and this is I'm still reading Epstein. Um, my own view is that Jewish humor will continue as long as the reigning note behind Jewish jokes continue to be the belief that human nature in all its nuttiness does not change, and that the greatest fool of all thinks it can. In any case, that is an essay by Joseph Epstein called Jews and Their Jokes. Uh, in any event, I always welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.